Hey everyone, it's Casual, and today we're going to go over the basics of flying machines. We'll use these two obsidian blocks as the starting point for our simple flying machine. Start with an observer facing the obsidian block, then a sticky piston, and two slime blocks. We'll repeat this on the other side, just reverse. And that's really it. You built your first simple flying machine. All that we need to do to send it on its way is put a block update in front of this observer. Now, so that we don't have to break a block every time we want to send this on its way, we'll use a trap door and a button like this. On this receiving end, I just want to show that we use an obsidian block in front of the slime block to stop the flying machine. This works nicely because slime blocks don't stick to obsidian. Before we go ahead and make more examples, I just want to show the limit of the sticky piston. The sticky piston is capable of pushing 12 blocks at a time. In this example, if we add a 13th block, the sticky piston gets frozen because it's overloaded. Removing that block once again allows the sticky piston to work. So let's go back to our first example and make this longer. Right now each sticky piston is only pushing 4 blocks, so we can add 8 more blocks before it gets overloaded. On one side, we'll substitute the slime blocks with honey blocks, because honey blocks and slime blocks can slide past each other. In total, we can extend this out to have 10 honey blocks and 10 slime blocks. Instead of making it longer like this, it's oftentimes more useful to have a wide flying machine. Let's go over an example of a wide flying machine. Start by placing an observer into the trap door, then put your sticky piston and two slime blocks out like we did before. Now we'll add seven more blocks, making this eight blocks wide in total. Finish this off by making it a short U shape by putting two blocks next to each other like this. Now we'll finish it by mirroring the same way. An observer, sticky piston, and then our 10 slime blocks in a U shape. Don't forget the slime block on the sticky piston like I almost did. We'll send this down and back and we can see that it works just fine. Looking at this setup, we'll notice that the flying machine is four blocks deep. We can make the flying machine's footprint smaller, down to three blocks, by using honey blocks. If you take a really close look, you'll notice that we saved one block off of each sticky piston. Each piston is only pushing 11 blocks now, and we have room for 12. We can make this whole flying machine one block wider if we really wanted to, by adding one honey block and one slime block. Up to this point, we've made flying machines that require you to send them on their way, and send them back. What if you want to make one that comes back automatically? We start the same way we did before with an obsidian and a trap door with a button, but this time we add one obsidian in front. Start building the actual flying machine by putting an observer into the trap door, and instead of a sticky piston, we use a slime block. On the other side, we'll put a sticky piston. Now on this left side, we start with a sticky piston, go into a slime block, and finish with an observer. Notice that each side of the flying machine is offset by one block. This will be important when we set up the redstone needed to return the flying machine. In the upper right, there's an image of the first flying machine that we made. Take a look and notice the differences. The part that makes a flying machine work is in the middle. The circle of sticky pistons and slime blocks pushes and pulls the flying machine along its way. The only real difference in these designs is how the observer is being brought along with us. In the first design, we used a slime block to attach the observer to the flying machine. In this design though, we're using one of the central slime blocks to attach to the observer. This means that we need one less slime block on each side, and it reduces the load on each sticky piston so that we can make the flying machine wider. Let's send it on its way and take a look at how we're going to send it back automatically. It's actually pretty simple, we just need to have an update on this block, and it sends back. We can do this by placing an observer that faces the flying machine and points into this obsidian block. This will let our obsidian block know when the flying machine has arrived. Once it arrives, the signal will go through the subsidian and trigger this repeater. If we test it now, we'll notice that it doesn't work because the repeater is sending too many signals too fast. 
To fix this, all we need to do is slow down the repeater by right clicking on it three times and making it a four tick delay. Now when we send the flying machine down, it comes back automatically. Now here's the cool part about this design. We can add nine slime blocks off of the central slime block to make a wing off the side. If you wanted to, you could really do this to the other side as well. We'll notice by adding another block that this doesn't work. So we can take this away and notice that we're at the limit of the sticky piston. Let's finish up our talk by taking a look at a practical example. Here I've built the exact same returning flying machine with the wing out to the left. I've placed the flying machine in front of a bamboo farm so that we can knock down the bamboo. This will make it a lot quicker to collect. We'll send it on its way and watch it work. Notice how it stops at the starting point and is ready for another cycle when the bamboo grows again. Well that's it for flying machines for today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. If this video helped you make your first flying machine or helped you understand them a little bit better, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell for future notifications. Thanks and we'll see you next time.